going to discuss using an anhydride to protect amine groups and this is covered in the carboxylic acids and derivatives, nucleophilic acyl substitution and alpha substitution reactions chapter. And the first thing we're going to discuss is why would we want to protect an amine? And amines are really good nucleophiles. Amines react with a wide range of different electrophiles. The lone pair on the nitrogen can attack a wide variety of electrophiles to form products of this type here. So if we want to prevent an amine acting as a nucleophile, we can protect it. And a classic way of protecting an amine is to convert it into an amide group. And the amide group, the lone pair on the nitrogen, is stabilized by conjugation. We can delocalize the lone pair from the nitrogen onto the oxygen. As we stabilize this lone pair, it makes it much less nucleophilic. So an amide is a much less nucleophilic group than an amine. One problem, though, with using amides as protecting group in synthesis is that we need quite harsh conditions to break the amide bond to recover the amine at the end of the reaction. So what we need to do is we want a protecting group that stabilizes the lone pair on nitrogen but also is easy to deprotect. And that's what we have with a carbamate functional group. In a carbamate, just as for amides, we can delocalize the lone pair onto the oxygen. An advantage of using carbamates is that they are easier to deprotect than amide groups. So they are mo more commonly used as protecting groups in synthesis. Let's now have a look at one commonly used amine protecting group, and this is the so-called BOC group. And here is the BOC group, which is the tertiary butyl oxycarbonyl group. And uh, you can see the lone pair on the nitrogen is stabilized by conjugation with the carbonyl group. So a BOC protected amine is much less nucleophilic than an amine itself. And we can protect this amine by reaction with ditert butyl dicarbonate. If you look at the structure of this molecule, you can see we have an anhydride group in the middle. So this is commonly known as BOC anhydride. We react the amine with BOC anhydride in the base. We can form the BOC protected amine. We can then recover the amine at the end of our synthesis by treating this compound with acid, typically trifluoroacetic acid or trifluoroethanoic acid with the abbreviation TFA. So if we treat the BOC protected amine with TFA, we can recover the amine. So we have these two steps. We can introduce the BOC group in a protection step, and then we can recover the amine in a deprotection step. Let's now have a look at the use of the BOC group in synthesis. And we're going to look at the transformation of this compound here to the molecule at the bottom. And what we're going to consider is the conversion of the ketone into the alkene. And this can be achieved in two steps. In the first step, we need to reduce the ketone to form an alcohol. And in the second step, we can then eliminate the alcohol to form the carbon-carbon double bond. And in order for the alcohol elimination to proceed successfully, we need to protect this nitrogen atom in the starting material. So the first thing we're going to do is to protect the nitrogen as a BOC group. So we react the amine with BOC anhydride in the presence of base, and the secondary amine is converted into the BOC carbamate. Now we achieve this two-step transformation that we discussed. Firstly, we're going to reduce the ketone using sodium borohydride, and then we're going to protonate the oxygen using acid, and the sodium borohydride selectively reduces the carbonyl group in the ketone. It doesn't react with the ester carbonyl or indeed the carbonyl in the carbamate group. And so we can selectively reduce the ketone to the alcohol. In the second step, we react the alcohol with this anhydride. And what we're doing here is we're converting the alcohol into a good leaving group, which is subsequently eliminated to form the carbon-carbon double bond. The mechanism for reaction of the alcohol with this anhydride unit here is shown in the box. So the lone pair on the oxygen of the alcohol attacks the anhydride and we form this ester unit here which acts as a leaving group in the reaction. So clearly we want the alcohol to act as a nucleophile to attack the anhydride. There would be a problem though if we had a free amine present. If we were looking at this reaction in the presence of a free amine, we would expect the nitrogen lone pair to react selectively with the anhydride because the nitrogen is more nucleophilic in an amine 
than the oxygen and an alcohol. So we need to protect the amine group. That ensures then that the alcohol can act as a nucleophile, converted into a good leaving group, and then subsequently eliminated to form the alkene. All that remains is to remove the BOC group and convert it back into a secondary amine, and we can do that using trifluoroacetic acid, TFA, and here is our deprotection step.